So now we're going to start to lay the foundation for um, regression models for survival. So previously we've been talking about the Kaplan-Meier model, which is a non-parametric survival model. Now we're going to move into building the bridge to parametric models and then semi-parametric models, um, looking at how we can use a regression model um, to estimate survival rather than this um, step function like the Kaplan-Meier. So I'm going to lay a foundation of a few things, um, a reminder of Poisson distribution, exponential distribution. Now these things aren't completely necessary um, to understand in order to be able to work with survival analysis models. But the more you um, remember or know about the, say, exponential distribution, kind of the deeper your understanding is going to be. So first, let's just remind ourselves of the Poisson process. And this is the sort of thing that you quite often learn in an intro stats course. So this is where we're looking at events that occur independently over time. And um, these have a rate of occurrence to use lambda as y over t. So lambda we're going to use to represent the rate, and this is the number of occurrences per unit time. Right? On average, how many times does the event occur per unit time? And this process gives rise to two different distributions, two theoretical probability distributions, or two random variables. So the first is the Poisson distribution, or here the Poisson random variable. And remember, this is where we're looking at um, letting y be the number of occurrences of the event in time t. Here, we'd say y follows a Poisson distribution with parameter lambda. And if you've learned this stuff um, before, little f of y, the probability that y equals little y, can be worked out as e to the negative lambda, lambda to the power of y over y factorial. And the Poisson distribution also had this feature that the mean is equal to the rate, and the variance is also equal to lambda or the rate. And so this was the um, theoretical probability distribution underlying um, Poisson regression. Now, the Poisson process, rather than looking at um, fixing time and asking how many times these events occur in a fixed period of time, we can also think of focusing on um, time itself as being the variable, how much time goes by until the event occurs. And that gives rise to the exponential distribution or the exponential random variable. Okay. And this here is where we say let t be the time until the next or y equals 1 occurrence. So I say, well, um, Rather than say the Poisson, where the Poisson fixes the time and says, given amount of time, how often does the event occur? The exponential says, let's fix y be 1. How much time goes by until an event occurs? So these two are the ways you can get at the rate. The exponential distribution, so often you learn this in an intro stats or more often in an intro probability course little f of t, which is sort of like the probability that t equals little t. And the reason I said sort of, it's not quite when this is a continuous random variable, but let's put that aside for now and, and not go down that rabbit hole. This is lambda e to the negative lambda t, and big f of t, the probability that t is less than or equal to little t, is 1 minus e to the negative lambda t. And so again, these are things that you um, commonly learn about in an intro stats or an intro probability course. And for the exponential, it has a mean of 1 over lambda, right, or 1 over the rate. Okay, so um, 
as mentioned, you don't fully need to, to know all the details of these two distributions in order to work your way through um, survival analysis. If you do, it's going to help deepen that understanding. So if you want, you can read a bit more. I suggest reading a bit more about the exponential distribution if you want to deepen that understanding a little bit. What I want to show you is how we can use the idea of this exponential distribution um, first to build a bridge to the exponential survival model, and then how we can use that same idea but extend it to get to um, the Weibel model or the cost proportional hazards model. Um, so I'll kind of build that bridge as we go through these series of videos. So I want to remind you that the survival function, survival function S of t, okay, is the probability that the survival time is greater than t. Actually, one thing I wanted to um, mention here before we move on, this is going to help connect the visual of a survival function. For the exponential distribution, big F of t, okay, the distribution function, is the probability that the survival time is less than or equal to t. And if you were to look at this, what it would end up looking like if you looked at a plot of this, here's t, here's big F of t. This time starts at zero and goes to infinity. This goes from zero up to one or 100%. And it has this exponential shaped curve. Right. So again, what's the probability the time until the next event occurs is less than or equal to little t? So what I want to remind you is the survival is the probability of t being greater. Right? What's the probability of surviving past a certain time point? Here, what's the probability of not surviving past a certain time point? We want to lean on the exponential distribution to be our um, underlying probability distribution for the survival function. We can think of the survival the probability that the survival time is greater than t can be written as 1 minus the probability that survival time is less than or equal to little t. So the probability that survival time is greater than 5 is 1 minus the probability the survival time is less than 5. So 1 minus the probability t is less than or equal to little t is 1 minus big F at t, this here. Or it's 1 minus 1 minus e to the negative lambda t. Comes out to e to the negative lambda times t. Now, a way I've thought of this is with survival function is probably that the survival time is greater than t. Okay? Or it's 1 minus um, this here. So essentially the survival is flipping this, right? S of t is 1 minus this here. Using the exponential distribution, here's the survival. It's actually taking 1 minus this, okay, is flipping that. Okay, so this is going to be the shape of the survival function that we're fitting. Okay. Again, using the exponential distribution. So I'm just going to rewrite this here as e to the negative hazard times t. This lambda, or this rate, is the hazard. So again, the hazard is telling us the rate of increase here, or when we do one minus that, the rate of decrease. Okay, so we can see that Essentially, if you've built some understanding previously of the exponential distribution, that's exactly what we're leaning on here. Okay. The survival function is e to the negative hazard times t. Okay. It's going to allow us to create a nice parametric curve. Okay. The hazard, or lambda, tells the rate at which this is decreasing. And then what we're going to do okay, to try and estimate the survival function is we can use regression. We can use a regression model, and the regression model essentially is going to be either we can think of it as estimating the hazard using e to the b naught plus b1 x1 
all the way up to VK XK. So we're going to estimate the hazard using another exponential, or we can think of it as we're going to model the log hazard as a linear function of the x variables. Okay, so again, just to recap some of this, the way we're going to go at trying to estimate a survival function, again, using the exponential survival model, is we can think of our survival function is going to be this negative exponential curve. It's going to be some shape like this. And if we want to try and estimate the rate at which the survival is decreasing, we can model the hazard, right, the rate of decrease, as an exponential function of x variables. So again, we can try and estimate survival using, say, someone on treatment A or B. Um, what's their age? How severe is their condition? Whatever variables we think are important. And so again, this is just kind of the foundation. What I'm going to get into next is trying to talk about um, the difference between the exponential model, which we basically just laid out right here. Um, and maybe let me take a moment to deviate here and just point out the connection with the other models we've looked at in the course. So previously we've been looking at linear regression, logistic regression, Poisson regression, and now we're looking at survival analysis. And when we're looking at regression models for survival, these are other generalized linear models. And what I want to show you here is that these essentially look very similar to the regression models we've seen in the course so far, right? Modeling the kind of y or modeling something as a linear function of x's. And one thing I want to point out is this exponential survival model is exactly the Poisson regression model we've been looking at before. And we can see that connection here, that with the Poisson process, the rate allows us to model the number of occurrences in a fixed period of time, or how much time until the next occurrence. Okay, so I just wanted to, to step back and say, what we see here is looks very, um, similar to what we've seen so far in the course. And so the way we're going to approach things again is going to be pretty similar to how it was before. Now one thing I want to say, in a moment I'm going to get to talking about the exponential model versus the Weibull model versus cost proportional hazard model. Where things differ a little bit is in this B0. These models are pretty similar aside from how this B0 or this intercept term differs a little bit depending on the type of model. So in a separate video, I'll get into that. But just to kind of close the loop, the way we are going to try and estimate the survival function is using a regression model like this, using the x variables. Again, someone on treatment A or treatment B, um, are they male or female, what's their age, whatever we think is important in terms of survival, we can fit a regression model that's going to allow us to estimate the hazard. What's the hazard given the x variables? Then we can take that hazard, sub it in here, and that's going to give us the survival function. So again, the way we're going to go at trying to estimate the survival function is, say, this has some particular shape. Right now, we'll say it has an exponential shape. And to define that, we just need to estimate the hazard or the rate of decrease for that curve. And the way we'll do that is we'll estimate the hazard using a regression model here. Um, the hazard is an exponential function of x's. The log hazard is a linear function of x's. Um, and we've already crossed this bridge a bit earlier, but I'm just going to remind you, this B1 is going to tell us how does the log hazard change for x1. If we exponentiate that, that's going to give us a hazard ratio. So in the next video, we'll get to talk about exactly how we separate or the, what the difference is between the exponential, the Weibull, and cost proportional hazard model. Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.